Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. I'm very pleased to be able to make this presentation to you. I was poking around doing some research and trying to find and see if I could find somebody who had done the work so I wouldn't have to do it. Because <laughs> I've already done this a few times in a few different ways. But I love uh, what this woman put together and how she nailed it. And I wanted to share that with you. So I contacted her um, from the channel Song of the Bride. The presenter's name is Dolly Weber. And I want to thank Song of the Bride for allowing me to repost this on my channel. So this is used with permission. I know that it would be a blessing to you because it fired me up because I'm I am so done with all of the false names that I, I just don't even know what to say. You don't have to drop a comment. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. Be on your merry way. We'll just agree we don't serve the same God. Because the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and He gave Him a particular name. And it was never written in Hebrew. And by the time you get to the end of this video, you're going to see the proof and the information concerning some of these false names. One in particular. I'm sorry if the truth offends you. I am not sorry for telling you the truth. And I'll be back after this presentation with a close. Check it out. Did Jesus authorize you to call him Yeshua? How would you respond if suddenly your wife, husband, or fiance began to call you by a different name, a name you never authorized? Imagine you found out that that new name actually belonged to someone who was trying to take your place. Or what if that name turned out to be a curse word, so that every time they called you that name, they were cursing you? Today, an overwhelming number of professing Christians have stopped calling Jesus by his original name. Name. Instead, they have embraced a new name, Yeshua, assuming that Yeshua is authentic and authorized by God. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Hi, I'm Dolly Weber. Maybe you yourself like to call Jesus Yeshua. You heard from somewhere that Yeshua was the real, original name for Jesus. And after all, it does sound Hebrew, and we know Jesus was a Jew. However, some of us resisted making the switch. Something just did didn't seem right about it. And as it turns out, increasing details now expose a long-term and cunning plot, not only to replace the true name of Jesus, but to literally exterminate the memory of Jesus forever. You see, Yeshua, in fact, does refer to a specific person, a mystical person, highly esteemed in the occult and the New Age movement. And even worse, when someone who hates Jesus calls him Yeshua, they are literally cursing Jesus. I am about to now uncover their plot. First, we need to get it straight that all original New Testament manuscripts were written in Greek, not Hebrew. By the time Jesus was born, the Hebrew language was completely dead. Jesus himself spoke Greek and ministered to people in Greek. The Old Testament Jesus read from and quoted from was called the Septuagint, and the language it was written in? That's right, Greek, not not Hebrew. In fact, for nearly 200 years before Jesus was born, everyone everywhere had totally stopped using Hebrew. The father clearly sent his adulterous wife Israel away with a certificate of divorce. He was finished speaking to her and no longer needed the Hebrew language by which he had spoken to her for hundreds of years. The father totally ended that language, literally causing Hebrew to wither and die from that point on. To this very day, 
today, no one even knows the original Hebrew or how it was actually spoken. A few years following Jesus' ministry on earth, the wicked emperor Trajan persecuted Christians so severely that many of them buried the scriptures they owned. Centuries later, many of those original manuscripts were discovered in the ground, by that time in fragments. Over 53,000 fragments in all were collected. And guess what language every one of those fragments was written in? Greek, not Hebrew. We also have 3,500 original intact New Testament manuscripts, and every single one of them is written in Greek. Even the letter to the Hebrews was written in Greek. Not a single one of them was written in Hebrew. So first of all, we need to expose the blatant and compound lie of those who would claim that Yeshua was found on the so-called original Hebrew New Testament manuscripts. Not only do no such original Hebrew New Testament manuscripts even exist, but the name Yeshua was never found on any of the original New Testament manuscripts at all. Therefore, one needs to ask, why did Jesus change to Yeshua and not the other way around? When Paul was blinded by a light on his way to Damascus, he cried out, Who are you? And the Holy Spirit replied, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. The Holy Spirit identified himself as Jesus not Yeshua. The name Jesus has appeared in all our Bibles for hundreds of years, thanks to William Tyndale, who translated those original Greek texts into English. Tyndale translated the original name Jesus as Jesus, not Yeshua. So who then came up with the name Yeshua and why? The answer lies in the same group of men who always hated Jesus. They killed him when he came here, and they continue plotting to destroy his reputation and his followers. Jesus called them the sons of Satan. We also call them Judaizers. The first change the Judaizers made to Jesus' name was to remove the S at the end of the name. Not long after Jesus returned to heaven, certain Judaizers decided to get back at Jesus for all that he had said about the Jews. They published a wicked book they entitled Sefer Toldoth Jeshu, The Life of Jesus. The book contained nothing but heinous, made-up stories about Jesus and his disciples, and Right on the cover of that book, they deliberately published Jesus' name with the S removed from the end of it. For the Jews, to add or subtract letters from people's names constitutes honor or insult for the individual behind that name. Therefore, when the Judaizers damaged the name of Jesus, shortening it to Jeshu, they gave insult to Jesus himself, also leaving his name with a more feminine form as well. During the 1500s, the J was changed to Y. The Judaizers wanted to erase the coming of Jesus and all the ramifications of what he accomplished by his death and resurrection. To do that, they set out to undo all that the Father had done to pave the way for the coming of Jesus. Somewhere around the 6th century AD, they began a painstaking plan to resurrect the Hebrew language, even though Hebrew was completely dead and no one even knew how to speak it. The Hebrew movement today continues this rebellious promotion not only of a phony Hebrew mystique, but it falsely claims that in the end times there will be one universal language for people to speak, and that language is going to be Hebrew. Listen to the following heretical statement made by so-called Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira, author of The Return of the Kosher Pig. I decided I'm going to preach in Hebrew tonight all night. All night is going to be a Hebrew night. You see the scripture saying in Zephaniah that in the last day there will be only one language. It's going to be Hebrew. There will be only one language. It's going to be Hebrew. So Shapira was citing Zephaniah 3.9, which infers nothing about Hebrew or any other language. It merely says, For then I will purify the lips of the peoples, that they may all call on the name of the Lord. In fact, if the father did have a fondness for Hebrew, he surely could have and would have used it at Pentecost. But instead, when he broke his 400 years silence that day, the father spoke in every other language but Hebrew. Scripture tells us that everyone present at Pentecost heard the Holy Spirit speak in their own language. And since no one anywhere by that time spoke Hebrew, that means that God spoke in every language but Hebrew at Pentecost. 
Peter once declared to a group of Christians, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He also declared this to Christians, once you were not a people, but now you are the chosen people of God. Once not a people, but now a holy nation, chosen people of God. Peter was speaking to New Testament Christians, saved through the blood of Jesus and speaking the languages of the world in which they lived. God no longer needed Hebrew by which to speak to his people. Yet out of blatant rebellion, the Masoretes had a different plan. They rejected God's new way of speaking and decided to make up a new version of Hebrew. Starting nearly from scratch, they built their own system of characters and rules, a virtually secret language which only the Masoretes themselves understood. Their first important goal was to make some necessary changes to the Greek Old Testament Jesus used. By the time they finished, the Masoretes had removed 23 of the Old Testament books Jesus read and quoted from. They completely changed the book of Esther and for some reason removed every single reference to God in that book. But even more reprehensible, the Masoretes also changed and removed key passages in the Septuagint which clearly confirmed how Jesus specifically matched the description of the promised Messiah. Imagine going to all that effort, changing the entire Septuagint into a made-up language just for the sake of making key changes without people knowing what you're doing until centuries later. That is exactly what the Masoretes did. The finished product, the Masoretic Old Testament with its numerous changes, was selected by King James I to use in his new Bible, even though the Old Testament version that Jesus himself used was more accurate and it was still available for King James to use. Another sinister achievement of the Masoretes was their invention of a code name for God. The Masoretes, like their contemporary Judaizers, were deeply rooted in the occult and Jewish mysticism called Kabbalah. And similar to their Freemason brothers, the Masoretes loved secret language, magic, mysteries, and codes. And so they concocted a code by taking four characters which the Septuagint had translated Lord, and the Masoretes announced that they had found a secret code for God's name. They even gave the code itself a name, the Tetragrammaton Code. Not only did that code introduce phony, unauthorized first names for the Father, but other Kabbalists and occultists then and now latched right onto that code as well. One of those occultists was Satanist Aleister Crowley himself, who loved the Tetragrammaton Code and said the following about it. Such a word should in fact be so potent that man cannot hear it and live. Such a word was indeed the lost tetragrammaton. Let the magician earnestly seek this lost word, for its pronunciation is synonymous with the accomplishment of the great work. Kabbalist Judaizers continue to make up more and more first names out of this magic code. Two of the fake names stand out as most popular. One of them is Yahweh. Not only was Yahweh an old pagan god of metallurgy, but Albert Pike, a prominent Freemason, correctly identified Yahweh as Satan. On page 162 of Morals and Dogma, Albert Pike states, The true name of Satan, the Kabbalist says, is Yahweh reversed. The other name is Jehovah. Madame Blavatsky, a Russian occultist, philosopher, and founder of the Theosophical, Philosophical Society correctly identified Jehovah as Satan. On page 73 in her Secret Doctrine, Blavatsky states, Jehovah, esoterically as Elohim, is also the serpent or dragon that tempted Eve, and the dragon is an old glyph for astral light. Changing the names of false gods is important for the Judaizers. Exodus 23:13 instructed the Israelites not to call upon false gods, but Judaizers have twisted the verse by actually renaming the gods they reject. And so they changed how to refer to the God of the Bible, giving him a phony first name. But they also concocted a fake name for Jesus, introducing him through the back door. First, we know that all of the original New Testament manuscripts were written in Greek 
not Hebrew. We know that all of the original New Testament manuscripts contain the name of Jesus or Jesus, not Yeshua. And we also see how a group of wicked Jesus haters deliberately harmed Jesus' name by dropping the S at the end of it. But what's the big deal? As long as we know and God knows who we're referring to. Does the actual name really make a difference? I'm glad you asked. The name makes a huge difference. There is only one name that can save us. In the book of Acts, Peter had healed a man who had been crippled all of his life, and the Judaizers were angry about it. Peter then shouted to the crowd, Let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by his name this man stands here before you now healed. For there is salvation in no one else. There is no other name under heaven that has been given to people by which we must be saved. Paul preached to the Philippians. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In in Luke 10, we read that Jesus sent out 72 people to minister in his name by doing the same works they had seen Jesus do. And when those 72 returned, they reported, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. The name of Jesus is the name that holds the power. The name Yeshua was never given power from the Father, and therefore it has no power. Demons do not respond to the name Yeshua. They only respond to the name Jesus. The correct name most certainly does matter. If a little girl was searching for buried treasure in a big sandbox, wouldn't you get suspicious if an older child came along and adamantly told that little girl to stop digging? If there's really nothing to find, then leave the kid alone. They'll find it out soon enough, right? So it is with those who adamantly protest the name of Jesus. Do you remember how the Jewish leaders hated to hear people preach in the name of Jesus? When the Jewish leaders released Peter and John from jail, they strictly forbid them from speaking or teaching at all in the name of Jesus. Don't you find that suspicious? The Jews wanted desperately to hush the name of Jesus then, and their modern-day brothers and sisters try to hush the name of Jesus today for the very same reason. The name of Jesus represents the power of God, and those who hate Jesus hate that fact. Various modern-day Judaizers today, while falsely claiming to be true Christians, show a mysterious promotion of the name Yeshua, while they literally mock the name of Jesus and those who speak his name. One of those men is the founder of El Shaddai Ministries and calls himself Rabbi Mark Biltz. Here are the following clip. All right, so think about this. No one spoke English anywhere in the entire world 2,000 years ago, let alone in the Middle East. If you ask one of the disciples where Jesus was, they would have had no idea who you were talking about. So that could not be the name whereby people can be saved. If you ask one of the disciples where Jesus was, they would have had no idea who you were talking about. So that could not be the name whereby people can be saved. Gosh, <laughs> something wrong here. Something wrong here. Another one of those men is prominent in the Hebrew movement and promotes his recent book, The Return of the Kosher Pig. He calls himself Rabbi Itzhak Shapira and makes a clear distinction between Jesus and Yeshua. Yeshua, he says, is the real Jewish Messiah and he is welcome. But Jesus, he's the wrong guy and we don't want him around. Listen to the following clip. You know what Israel needs today? They need Yeshua! They need Yeshua! But if you bring Jesus, you bring the wrong guy. Don't bring us Jesus. But if you bring Jesus, you bring the wrong guy. Don't bring us Jesus. 2,000 years. Crusades, Inquisition, Holocaust. They tried it. It didn't work. Bring the real Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. In reality, Yeshua happens to be an actual person, and that person clearly is not Jesus. So, who is the real Yeshua? Forty years after Jesus returned to the Father, a man calling himself Rabbi Yishmael ben Elisha wrote a book called The Third Enoch. In the book, he presented fabricated magical myths, and one of the mythical characters he introduced was an archangel called Metatron.
who or what is the Metatron? The name Metatron itself may be revealing. There are numerous possible etymologies for the name Metatron. However, some scholars, such as Philip Alexander, believe if the name Metatron originated in Hecalot Merkaba texts, such as Three Enoch, then it may be a magic word similar to Adiron and Dabdabiron. If so, this figure aligns with the magic arts, as are the so-called angels. Believe it or not, Metatron is gaining in popularity right up through today, even among many professing Christians. The myth claims that Metatron began as a man named Enoch, who lived on earth and then went to heaven where he was promoted to become an angel, an archangel. In their myth, they call the creator Yahweh and assign the title of lesser Yahweh to this Metatron. They claim that Metatron is an angelic go-between for their god Yahweh and all of mankind. And Obviously, a fallen angel assumes this role as Metatron because he channels regularly through many Metatron followers today. Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning October 21st, 2019. And we have Metatron stepping forward to answer this question. Welcome, this is Kristen Taylor. This is a meditation to connect to the energy of Archangel Metatron for guidance, and healing. So, what does Metatron have to do with Yeshua? The short answer is, Metatron, according to the Kabbalists, is Yeshua. In fact, a growing number of pseudo-Christian organizations are stating this as a fact, that Yeshua, who they have convinced you to think is Jesus, is actually the Archangel Metatron. Listen to the following statement by so-called Rabbi Itzhak Shapiro. How many of us want to know when we pray, God hears it? I'm going to tell you a secret. There is only one way to get this collect call. May it be, here's your, the, the, the prayer in English, may it be your will that at the sounding of the shofar that we blow today, we will be as a sword fabric that is filled with the fear of the one in charge, Tartiel, as you accepted Elijah, blessed be his name, and Yeshua, that Yeshua, who is called the Prince of the Face, who is being Prince Metatron, may you fill us with his mercy, blessed be your name, Lord of mercies. Yeshua, who is called the Prince of the Face, who is being Prince Metatron. Shockingly, we find many other Judaizer groups, including even Jews for Jesus, now fully embracing Kabbalah and fully confirming that Yeshua is this angel called Metatron. In advertising, there is a tactic called bait and switch. That's when the seller advertises certain known items at an apparent bargain, but fully intends to substitute inferior goods at the time of purchase. And so Yeshua promoters have done with unsuspecting followers of Jesus who thought that by speaking of Yeshua they referred to Jesus. But all along, Yeshua is now coming to light as a New Age demon spirit, also known as the Archangel Metatron. What a blasphemous bait and switch. Are you one of the Christians that bought it? If you were to further examine details about this Metatron, aka Yeshua, you would see nothing but the occult. The God of the Bible and his son Jesus have nothing remotely in common with this Kabbalistic character. According to the book of Hebrews, Jesus could never be an angel or anything close to an angel. Jesus is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of God. Jesus is as much superior to the angels as his name is superior to the angels. All God's angels worship Jesus. So-called Rabbi Itzhak Shapira presents incredible and blasphemous details about Metatron, Yeshua, and the endgame they are bringing. Any astute Bible believer readily recognizes those details as matching many elements of the Antichrist and his agenda. Yitzhak Shapira states the following about Yeshua. Christianity is Edom, and when Yeshua comes back, he is going to destroy Christianity as an entity. Does that sound like Jesus to you? 
you? As if we need any more evidence to reevaluate renaming Jesus. I have one more piece of evidence that you're not going to believe. When we say Yeshua, we are verbalizing an acronym for an old Yiddish curse, Yamak Shemo. May his name and his memory be obliterated. Today, the names Yeshu and Yeshua are used interchangeably as referring to Jesus. And unknown to most Christians is the fact that Yeshu or Yeshua, also abbreviated YS, is a well-known acronym for a Yiddish curse, widely known and gladly spoken against Jesus by those who hate him. It is used 26 times against Jesus in the Talmud and also used on other arch enemies of the Jews, including Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Mengele, and Haman in the new version of Esther. On an interview with Benny Hinn, so-called Rabbi Shapira and so-called Rabbi Jonathan Burness, president of the Jewish Voice, discussed the curse when the topic came up rather unexpectedly. And we have a 2,000-year history of animosity and persecution, sadly, in the name of Christ and Christianity. But as a result of that and the sage's decision to reject Jesus as the Messiah, he became a curse word in Judaism. He became the, the, he became the unkosher thing that the Christians embrace, but representing to the Jewish community pain and suffering and persecution. Even the name of Yeshua, Yeshu, is a cursed one. Yeah. Well, wait, the, so the, the word Yeshu? Yeshu is Yimach Shmo V'Zichro. May his name be blotted for eternity, blotted out for eternity. Is that what it means? Literally, that's what it's named, of course. Now, most Jews say don't connect Yeshu and understand that, right? No, the, the, I, I tell you wow. for me, as an Israeli, every Jew know that in, Yeshu in, is Imach Shmo V'Zichor. It is his name now. Please understand. Is, this is the name our people know him as by. What blasphemous devils would deceive Christians not only to exchange the true name of Jesus with a counterfeit, but to replace his name with an actual curse word? It's time for all true followers of Jesus to wake up and call their master Jesus by his rightful name, Jesus. The name that signifies salvation, not the name that signifies a curse. Those who tell us lies about Jesus hate Jesus. And whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ, such a person is the Antichrist, denying both the Father and the Son. I look forward to talking to you next time. The Lord bless you. Wow, that was amazing. That was an awesome presentation. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. I know it fired me up, but I got one question for you. Now that you know the truth, am I therefore your enemy because I tell you the truth? And if you hate the name of Jesus, maybe you wanna stop and ask yourself right now, why that is especially when it is the only name given among men whereby we must be saved and it was given to the Lord by the Father. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Amen.